Hi, I just wanted to talk through using um, JupyterLab and give you an idea what it's about. So once you launch Jupyter, we we'll talk about the installation in another video, you'll be presented with this screen. And so since I've only got Python installed, I'm going to choose a Python notebook. So on the left-hand side, we'll see the newly created file. And on the right-hand side, where the business gets done, um, we'll see this gray square and this gray rectangle. And this gray rectangle is a code cell. And this enables us to enter code and execute it. In this instance, um, we can enter Python code because that's the only language I've got installed in this particular Jupyter notebook. And um, it will execute each one of these cells, cells in a serial fashion. So when I write some code and execute it, so here we just say print hello world, it will execute that code, send the standard output to the screen for us and create a new cell. So I can then step through the code and actually create um, a working notebook, an example I can share with my colleagues in um, other groups and other departments. But since we're interested in Oracle, let's go through and import the uh, Oracle module CX Oracle. And this gives us the ability to connect Python to an Oracle database. And since we've actually um, got this module in here, we can now go through and establish a connection. Now I've got a local database, a local Docker database running in my database. So all I'm gonna do here is to actually create a connection using CX Oracle. I've got a user called SOE, and I'm gonna connect using a connect string local to my database. Now I've actually got a connection. Most important step is to go through and create a cursor. I can use that connection. Once I've got a cursor, I can then create a um, result set and execute my select statement from the database. Now, um, <laughs> this is all well and good, but I now want to be able to iterate through those rows. And so I'm just gonna create a simple for loop and then print the rows from that result set. Um, and now the thing to be aware of obviously is in Jupyter, by default, if you open a cursor and execute an open-ended statement like that, it will look to retrieve all of the rows. Since I only really want a small sample set, I'm just actually going to limit it to the first 10 rows. When I execute that um, statement now, what I can see is the rows coming back, and they're coming back in sets, which is kind of clunky, um, but we're going to come back to that at a later date. But the data is there, and I can go through and use this method to go through and create the data. Now, Jupyter Notebooks is much more capable and flexible than that. And one of the things that would be nice is to be able to put boiler text and explain to my colleagues why I'm doing what I'm doing, and potentially even use this as the basis, which I commonly do for things like blogs or reports inside of the environment. So I can document what I'm actually doing and show the code I've actually used to execute it. So I can go through and create new cells. And the difference here is these cells won't execute Python. They're gonna go through and hold Markdown and I can change it to Markdown, and then it's just a simple case of using Markdown to indicate what I basically want to use this notebook for. And so some just arbitrary text in this particular example, you know, hashes create titles, stars at the start of line create bullet points. And so I can go through and edit that code. And um, this is all well and good. So now I actually have um, a notebook with some template text and the actual code, and I can go through and add additional cells and input further code or um, text um, to highlight what I'm basically doing. Now, the, one of the problems you've actually seen here is that it's if I wasn't to execute lots of SQL statements and do investigatory work, I don't want to have to keep writing SQL time and time and time again. Now, Jupyter has um, extensions called Magix, which makes it very simple to extend the capabilities of it. And in this particular instance, uh, Catherine Devlin has written a magic that enables us to connect to a database. Once we're actually able to use those magics, it's become very simple to build um, work that focuses more on the actual SQL and the results we're getting back than the Python code that sits around side of it. In this instance, we first need to load that magic, and all we have to do there is to use the percent um, load SQL extension SQL, and then we all need to use from then on is the percent SQL statement in this particular instance to establish the connection that we did previously. So I'm now connected um, to the database using this magic extension. And once I've actually got the magic extension, I can go through as I did before, just by um, implementing simple pieces of SQL using the percentage SQL. Now, the nice thing about this percent SQL and the select statement it executes is that I don't need to write any of the cursors or any of the execute statements, 
More importantly, the actual data that comes back is nicely formatted. It's not sets, it's actually properly formatted HTML that I can actually scroll throughout and figure out what's going on. So a big improvement where we were before. And this makes it very simple inside of these notebooks to build very sophisticated um, exploratory investigations into the underlying and underpinning data. Now, um, one other feature of um, Python that makes it very popular is the ability to go through and use it for things like data sciences. And a module that's used very commonly in data science is one called Pandas. And this gives us a table-like structure, an in-memory table-like structure that I can um, run joins against, I can merge data sets, I can manipulate the individual columns and rows. Now, I don't want to go into any detail what Pandas is about. If you're interested, um, go to the pandaspydata.org website and take a look um, at some of the tutorials they actually provide there. For this particular instance, all I'm actually going to use is the SQL magic extension to actually retrieve the data, not into a results that's displayed, but into a variable. And that is a capability that the SQL magic extension provides for us. So all I need to do in this particular instance is to actually use the percentage SQL as I did before, but instead of actually giving a statement, I specify a variable that I actually want the data to be placed into. In this instance, amres. And what we can see here is the account manager results set is actually now placed into a local variable. I could display that as before. What's more useful and um, important to me is to actually be able to place it into a data frame so I can do some more manipulation of the data and potentially even go through and plot it. So to do that, just need to call the method data frame on that result set. And then in this particular instance, I'm specifying an index to indicate that the account ID is the thing I'm going to use to look up inside of the data sets. Now I've actually got that um, data, uh, data frame. I can find out information about the type of data I've actually got. So I've only got 10 rows, obviously. I can take a look at the underlying data as I did before, or I could go through and actually see some information about the metadata. So how many rows you've actually got, the variance, the actual percentiles for that data set, and so on. So very useful data frames um, and pandas. I suggest you take a look at it. It's a very useful way for building applications out and doing uh, very sophisticated um, data investigatory work. Now, the next step, having got this data frame um, back from the data sets, might want to do is to go through and uh, plot it. You know, a picture says a thousand words and that's really simple to do. To do that, all that we actually need to go through and do is to, again, we might as well actually while we're at it, tell people what we're actually doing and then go through and to use another magic that basically enables us to plot charts in line using the matplotlib um, module. And then it's a simple command that simply says, using that data frame, plot the data. And that's it. Um, I, you know, this is a very quick walkthrough showing you how you can actually do things inside of Pandas. And it's not supposed to be an in-depth model as to what you would actually use it for. So that's it. So um, what we'll do in the next video is take a look at the installation of uh, Jupyter Notebook um, and some of the other utilities, Oracle Instant Client, making sure things like uh, Docker are set up to walk you through the actual um, workflow I use when I'm creating Oracle databases for testing and evaluating features and functions inside of my own environment. Um, I'll leave links to Jupyter so you can download the software um, as well as links to Pandas and the Oracle Instant Client. So um, with that, um, thanks for very much for listening and paying attention to what I had to say um, and I'll see you in the next video.